was 2019 and Apple released the first iPhone ever that I could genuinely see myself having, the 11 Pro. That was one year before the Apple Silicon revolution that would dramatically change the entire computer market. But even then, you could start seeing that they finally began to listen to what customers actually want. And apart from that, those last couple of years were mostly Android dominated, which kind of forced Apple to reconsider their strategy. It was the time before the Huawei ban, where they grew more and more with phones like the Mate 20 Pro being arguably the best phone of 2018, with an amazing battery life and charging, more camera capabilities, and even a Face ID like the iPhone. You also had classics like the Pixel 2 setting the new standard for computational photography. OnePlus that has become a really well-rounded mid-ranger has become more popular. So then, after Apple saw all of that and realized the position they were in, after a pretty bad 10s series with barely any updates, weak battery life and an average camera, came the iPhone 11 series, where we got the name Pro for the first time, which stood for the actual new iPhone, and the regular 11 was a more budget-oriented version, with some trade-offs like a way worse 720p LCD display. On the Pro models, however, they introduced the three-lens camera system that was so good for the time that people actually started making movies with just their iPhone. After years of fulfilling the meme of having a horrible battery life and cracking easily, it finally abolished both of those things with battery easily lasting the full day and the build quality improving as well. Yes, there were still a lot of things that could have been improved, like the promotion that has gotten more popular around that time, or how about a smaller notch or a hole punch that all the other phones adopted a long time ago, or even a Type-C port instead of the Lightning. But now, a couple more years have passed and we have gotten almost all those things with the last two generations of iPhones. From first a smaller notch and a Pro Motion on the 13 series, and now even a hole punch. Kind of. It's still not there yet, but I'll tell you why I love this thing so much a bit later. But here we are, the iPhone 14 Pro. How does it compare to previous generations of iPhones and to other phones on the market? After using it for some time, it almost feels like this thing is over-engineered, with still some room for improvement. Let's start with the front. This is the brightest display in any phone ever with 2000 nits peak outdoor brightness, and that could easily be the only thing that I tell you about it. It's brighter than the S22 Ultra, than any Chinese phone, even though they always try to throw the craziest numbers at you, like the 200 megapixel camera or the 240 watts fast charging. I'm not joking when I say that if you're inside, sometimes it feels like it's hurting your eyes if you turn the brightness all the way up. But I guess when you're standing directly in the sun, you can still easily see everything on it. So like the concept of having the Apple Watch Ultra, this feels like just covering every single edge case scenario, which is a good thing. Also, the new always-on display is great. I didn't expect at all that I'll be using it all the time. And I really appreciate that they did it the Apple way, which is different from everyone else. So you can still see your wallpaper and all the widgets and notifications that you have on it, which comes in very handy. It's nice that they also added the option to turn off the wallpaper, so the battery doesn't drain as much, but I find it way more pleasing the other way around. It does affect the battery a little bit, but it still easily lasts me the full day of use, so there's nothing to worry about. I also like that it detects when you walk away far away from it with your Apple Watch on, so it turns off, but way more often if I don't want it to be on, I just place my phone upside down or put it in my pocket if I'm outside. But none of those features are the most fascinating to me about the front. Not the brightness, nor the always-on display. It's the dynamic island that I'm sure will be just a gimmick for some people, but I absolutely love how they thought outside of the box and asked themselves, how can we make this hardware limitation, still needing place for front camera and sensors, appear like it's supposed to look like this? And the answer is with software. And they definitely succeeded because for every other iPhone that isn't the 14 Pro, it feels like you're missing out on a very nice feature. I'm telling you, I'm using this thing all the time, whether I'm playing music or a video, a podcast, while using the maps or a timer or I'm on a call. You can even have multiple apps that make use of it appear at the same time and go between them. 
And don't even get me started with the alerts and notifications, like incoming calls, charging, AirPods connection. It feels so friendly and just right that this is the absolute best use of a space like that. And at the end, I like how no one in the Android world thought about something like this. Even though the hole punch is pretty much the standard for the past 4 years. And now, as soon as Apple introduces such an awesome and intuitive software feature, you immediately have developers working on apps that do something similar to it for Android. Which just shows you who's still leading the industry. The other thing that feels like it's hit the ceiling are the cameras. First of all, I gotta say, don't fall for any megapixel count in any phone's marketing. Because in today's world, it's the least important metric for photo and video quality. iPhones had 12 megapixel cameras for the past 6 generations. And they were still the smartphone camera king, like I said, since the 11 Pro. Because what's way more important today is the processing, the AI and machine learning algorithms. So every phone interprets what it's seeing through the lens in their own unique way. But regardless of all that, this year they finally did make a change in the megapixel count. And then you know it's for something actually meaningful. So 4 times as much as before. 48 megapixel main camera. And I just gotta say, these camera bumps are becoming so big that now the phone sits perfectly on my index finger while I'm holding it, which is actually kind of nice. But the camera itself is very remarkable. It's actually still taking 12 megapixel shots, but it does that by binning 4 pixels into one. So there is more detail and less noise than before, the colors are slightly better, and I found the overall images to look a bit more realistic. And because the sensor is this huge, it allows you to crop in two times into the main camera and take photos without losing any detail. And I use this way more often than the 3x telephoto lens, cause that much zoom is usually too much for what I'm shooting. But if you want to utilize the full power of this camera, you'll need to go to settings and turn on the 48 megapixel Pro RAW shots. And then you'll get even more detail and information out of your photos. But just so you know, and it actually warns you that these photos take around 75 megabytes each. So only 14 of these and it's already around a gigabyte. But what also improved not just the main but all the other cameras as well is the Photonic Engine. And this is a software feature which allows the phone to get way more information out of the light that it's dealing with. So the photos are much better in low light and overall. You don't get nearly as much noise artifacts as before, especially on the ultra wide, which is actually my favorite camera to use. The other, also softer feature that is just now useful to me is the cinematic mode, that finally works in 4K instead of the full HD, which was so contradictory just from the name. How can it be cinematic mode and use 1080p resolution? But now, with the computational power of A16, this feels way less like a gimmick, and you can actually get some very useful footage out of it. And the background is also cut out almost perfectly. So it really fascinates me and makes me wonder, how similar will a smartphone eventually become to the actual DSLR or a professional mirrorless camera? Cause it's evident that they are a dying breed already. And with features like these, I'm really looking forward to the next few years. So okay. It's pretty much the best smartphone camera, the best processor, and the best display in the world. But like I said, there is still some room for improvement, with only three more things in particular. But as it stands right now, all it takes to get there is time and patience. Let me explain. Those three things are the lightning port, that isn't very handy for transferring these large photo and video files, even though the dynamic island is a great feature for the time being, it still takes a significant amount of space and it's very noticeable while you're watching something or playing a game. And third, it's the weight of the phone, especially on the Pro Max, which is around 240 grams, all because of the stainless steel frame. But like I said, in a couple of years, all those problems will be resolved. With leaks confirming that there's one more iPhone until the under display face ID sensors, so it will then be just one small hole, and three more iPhones until even the front camera goes underneath. So it finally becomes this dream phone that everyone has been looking forward to for like a decade now iPhone 15 Pro will move away from stainless steel and use titanium, 
which is a stronger yet lighter material and it will also finally replace the lightning port with the Type-C. But that will be just the stopgap before the totally portless iPhone, with also a display with no interruptions whatsoever. But until then, this beast of a phone will definitely do its job for me. And it will also be helping me run this entire YouTube channel. So thank you all so much for watching until the end. I'm really excited that we're building such an amazing community. So I want to announce that I'm actually going to do a giveaway. When this channel finally hits 1000 subscribers, I'm going to give away five of you my Lightroom presets. You can check them out on my website, apart from my other work, and also support me on my Patreon. So hit the subscribe button and like this video and check out my other videos as well. Thanks for watching.